Hey, Pickens physics students. So uh, this video is going to be a quick introduction to graphs and what they mean in terms of position, velocity, and acceleration. And so here I have a graph. This graph is position versus time, position versus time. So what kind of information can you get from this graph? Well, you can find out what the object's position is relative to time. This would be for one dimensional, okay? So one dimensional position. This is simply going to be the distance away from the starting position, not the distance traveled. So in other words, that would actually be the displacement. So how far away is the object from the starting position um, at any point in time? Now, if this is one dimensional position, then you could think about this as being in the X or the Y directions or the Z direction. Again, if you're thinking in terms of three dimensions, but along any one of those directions, so north, south, how far are you? Or up, down compared to the ground level, how far are you away from where you started at time equals zero? Uh, because this graph is rising and all of these positions are positive positions, that means these would always be in the positive x so this means you're going to the right or you're going east or this means you're going in the positive y or you're going north or this means that you're going up above the ground in the positive z direction if you're thinking about that as z although we often represent up and down as y and the displacement from the starting position as x if we're thinking about two-dimensional motion but for one-dimensional motion if this is our plot and we have a data table with the data associated with that graph, then we could look at that data and we can also determine a few things. So perhaps in algebra class, you remember taking the difference between points, taking the difference um, between say these two points in terms of their position and then dividing by the difference in time and so this could help you figure out what uh, order of a polynomial you were looking at, for instance. So if you notice all of these times, they are incrementing by one second. We're gonna, I'm gonna say those are seconds, okay? And if they are all incrementing by one second, then that really makes the math easy because when we divide our change in position, so delta S, over delta t, and I know I shouldn't use the capital T there, but um, if we do that change in position over change in time, all of our changes in time will always be one. So remember, we're also going to lose one point here because we're looking at these differences and we're going to only have one point less than the points we have when we look at the differences. So for instance, zero and 0 0.5, what's the difference? Well, it's one half, right? What's the difference between 0.5 and two? Well, that's one and a half. We could keep going two and 4.5, but in Excel, the nice thing you can do in Excel is you can set up an equation. And so what's the difference between 4.5 and two? Well, it's 2.5. And now with that equation, I can drag it down, okay? Now, if I drag it down all the way, does this last cell mean anything? No, we're trying to find right now the difference between 50 and nothing. And so this point here really doesn't give us any information about that, okay? Now, all of these points, what is this gonna represent? Our change in position over change in time? In other words, our change in displacement over change in time? What are these representing for us? Well, and hopefully you said velocity. And so I'm gonna take away the table and I'm gonna show you guys the graph as I sketch that out. And so we still have our times, okay? So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And you could spread those out too. The, these are gonna just go up by one. So I'll do every other line here, okay? Now, because we're taking this change in position over change in time, we want to think about where we plot those. So 
when we look at the position graph here and we think about that and we think about the difference between the zero and the one, and that's the line we're getting for there. That's going to be the average velocity over that time, that time segment. And the average velocity will always be at the midpoint of that segment. So what's the midpoint between zero and one? Well, it's 0.5. So at 0.5 seconds, at a half a second, our velocity is 0.5, according to the table. And I can show that to you guys again after the graph. But at a time of 1.5, the velocity was also 1.5. That's the midpoint for that second segment. And let me show you guys that table again, just so that you can see what I'm talking about. So this 0 0.5, that's at the midpoint between 0 and 1. This 1.5, that's at the midpoint between 1 and 2. This 2.5, that's at the midpoint between 2 and 3. So this is really nice right now for our graph, right? It looks like for our graph, all of these points whatever the time is, that's what the velocity is going to be. And so the velocity here right now happens to be equal to the time. And so we have all of these points, all of them are at the midpoints and all the way up to 9.5. Now from looking at those points, how would you describe the shape of that line? Well, hopefully you said it is linear. It is a straight line. And this is better if I have a ruler, but here we go. Straight line, yay. Velocity in this case happens to be equal to time in this case. In other words, with this data. So you could have another object moving in a different situation where this would not be true, but for this particular graph, it is true. Now notice that our velocity is still changing, right? But if we come back to our table and we think about doing this delta thing again, if we think about trying to determine what the order of the polynomial is, the original polynomial for the original position graph, well, now we're gonna have Let's say this equals velocity. Now we're going to have delta V over delta delta T. Okay. Luckily, our midpoints are all still, um, our times are all still one apart, right? If it, we were going from 0.5 to 1.5, the difference in time there is still one. So we're still dividing by one. And what do you notice is the difference between all of these velocity values? Well, they're all increasing by one. If the difference in time is one, okay, then that's what you've got going on. Notice again, that we lose one of our points here because we're finding the differences. Well, what is the change in velocity divided by time equal to? Well, that's the acceleration. So according to this, what's the acceleration for this data set? Well, it's a constant acceleration and the acceleration is one. So if you wanted to look at a graph of that, here's my acceleration. Acceleration. And here is my time. And no matter what the time is, my acceleration is one, which makes that a horizontal line, okay? Notice that in my velocity graph, my velocity was increasing by a constant amount. Notice that in my velocity graph, the slope was one. And notice that in my acceleration graph, the value where that horizontal line is at is one and that that y-intercept is one. So that's actually what's relating all these graphs. And whether you believe it or not, you actually just did calculus along with me. So even you get introduced to some of this in your earlier algebra classes where you're trying to figure out what the um, order of the polynomial is. When you're looking at those changes and you're doing those changes over time,
that's actually an example of calculus. Now, technically, these are all averages. We haven't really done calculus. We're going to come back around to that with a graph. But change in position over time equals velocity and change in velocity over time equals acceleration. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the slope of this graph over any segment is the average velocity over that segment. The slope of this velocity over time graph is the acceleration. And so if you are looking at a velocity time graph and you notice it is a linear graph, a straight line, then that means you have constant acceleration. Now, the other thing that's pretty cool is that with these graphs, you can also do some calculus, really is what it is, but you don't actually have to do real calculus to think through these. If you notice and you look at the acceleration versus time graph and you say, okay, at time zero, so if time equals zero, which would be right here, this would be zero time. And I, my acceleration is one. In this case, let's say that all these units are in a, uh, SI meters and seconds. And so velocity would be meters per second. Acceleration would be meters per second squared. And position up here would just be meters, OK? If this is meters per second squared, and you know the acceleration, how would you find your change in velocity? Well, change in velocity over time equals acceleration. How would you find your change in velocity if you know acceleration and time? Hopefully, you said you would multiply acceleration and time. So at time 0, your time is 0. No matter what your acceleration is, your change in velocity over 0 seconds would be 0. Okay. Now, from the beginning of this graph, if you look through to, let me grab a different color here. I don't know how well this will show up on the camera, but let's say you go to uh, two seconds. So all these lines were individual seconds. If you go to time equals two seconds and your acceleration is one, well, notice what are we doing here? We're taking two seconds, right? Time, two seconds times one meter per second squared. Well, what does that look like? If you have two seconds down here times one meter per second squared here, and I know those look like they're even dimensions, but I did the scale differently on my y-axis here or my acceleration axis. But what does that end up giving you? Well, that gives you the area under the curve, right? So the area under the curve, area under, acceleration versus time equals delta v for change in velocity, right? And so if we take a different time and two, uh, two four, six, if we come out to six seconds and we want to see what the area is under the curve then, well, now that's six times one, six seconds times one meter per second squared one of those seconds will cancel. And so I would have six meters per second would be my delta V, okay? Now notice that if I started with a velocity of zero, according to this graph, then that's what I would expect my velocity to be after six seconds. And I know my line isn't all that great here, but notice you see that you should be crossing there at six meters per second at six seconds, right? Now we can do the same thing with the velocity and time graph, but what are we gonna get if we're looking at our velocity times our time? What are we gonna get here if we're looking at the area under the curve? Well, hopefully you said change in position, but now what shape is this gonna make each time we look at this triangle? Right here, we've got 
two seconds and we've got two meters per second. So that's two meters per second up and it's two seconds across. Well, that would give me four, right? But if I look at my position at two seconds, is my position at four? Up here, I was saying this was one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. All the lines represented one. And now it's at two, right? So what do you have to do here? What's the area of a triangle? Well, an area of a triangle is one half of the base times the height. One half base times height equals area. But we're still doing the same thing. We're still looking at the area under the curve and the area under the curve between those two times would represent the um, displacement during that time change. And so this is kind of how you can work backwards with these. Once more, let me grab a pen here. And let's say that um, acceleration times time equals delta V, okay? And going backwards up here, velocity times time equals delta S for position. I think algebra people like to use that a lot. The difference of course here compared to here is that our acceleration was constant, right? Up here, our velocity is changing. So the other way to think about this is you could think about it as average velocity. Well, what's the average velocity over this two second period? If my velocity, sorry. If my velocity is changing, it's two meters per second here, right? It's zero meters per second here. What's the average of those two speeds, two and zero? What's the average? It's one. Notice that if you take the average velocity of one times that time, two seconds, I still get my two meters, right? I still get the two meters for what my displacement would be at that time. And so you wanna be able to look at graphs. I'm not gonna ask you to do calculus kinds of uh, calculations with these, but knowing how these slopes and areas are related is definitely a conceptual thing for physics, okay? So this is the graphing video, and then I'm gonna create a 2D vector video for you guys as well.